This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I am Julie Shea, here with another episode of Advancing Allies. With me here today, I have Bryn Deckert-Crooks, who is a nurse practitioner, a pediatric nurse practitioner at the University of Michigan Congenital Heart Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So welcome, Bryn. Thank you. Glad Thank to you, have Julie. you back on HRS TV. It's a thrill to be That's back. That's good. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a little bit about patient advocacy groups um, and kind of the, the work being done between the Heart Rhythm Society and the SADS group, which is the Sudden, Arith uh, sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndrome or correct. organization. So That's can you correct. tell me a little bit about that, the SADS yeah, organization? So, sudden, uh, so SADS, which is Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndrome Foundation, as you yeah. mentioned, uh, is headquartered in, in Salt Lake. And their main focus is um, patient education and advocacy okay. and also connecting patients who need centers of excellence. They have a physician, a physician referral um, group that allows uh, patients to find physicians in their area that that are experts um, in this area. And they also have scientific advisory boards that really helps guide patient care, which is very important yeah. for this type of, of group. And I have the dis distinct pleasure to be a board of trustees member for SADS as well as Heart Rhythm. Oh, wow. Um, and so we collaborate quite a bit. Um, yeah. And I think it's very important that this work continues to happen. Oh, absolutely. So can you... Uh, do a little bit deeper dive and describe the relationship between SADS and HRS and why it's important. Um, sure. You know, kind of just do a little yeah, more Heart detail Yeah, Heart Rhythm Society really does uh, function as the scientific guidance for the SADS Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the SADS Foundation really focuses on patient relationships and advocacy. And I think they they both complement each other. So Heart Rhythm provides the science and SADS provides the information to patients. And it's also able to disseminate some of the information that may be very high level for patients and get it out to our patients so they understand. They do have some uh, patient education on their website. They also work very closely with the Pediatric and Congenital EP Society. So PACES. That's correct. Yep. That also provides some of the scientific guidance as well. So it is really, really one big group. Integrated <laughs> group. Yes. Yeah, it sounds like it. So just to kind of discuss that a little bit further about this collaboration between um, HRS as a scientific organization um, with HRS's tr initiatives to try to be a little bit more patient facing. Can that's, you speak to that? That's a little right. Bit? You know, with with uh, HRS's uh, launch of Upbeat.org, which is yeah. the patient education site, the information from specifically pediatrics was um, created by the um, Paces group as well as some of the yeah. SADS uh, members. Um, and I think uh, Heart Rhythm is really trying to focus you know, more and more on the patient. Yeah. And again, allowing the science that we do and we do so well to get to the patients for their right. understanding as well. Right, absolutely. I mean, I'm excited to see HRS embarking upon a little bit more patient-facing data because we are the clinical experts That's in right. this. And um, I think you know, ultimately the end game here is the patient. That, right? Is, right? that is right, so, yeah. Um, and so how can the Heart Rhythm Society continue to support the SADS mission? I think there's several ways and several ways they've already been doing this. So on the most recently, the expert consensus on remote monitoring guidelines, we had patient representatives on the guidelines. So I yeah. think really melding the, the patient advocacy with the science, I think is very important. Yeah. Again, our new education website for patients has been uh, really great. And I think patients are going to that information quite a bit. Um, and again, making sure that we're getting the science to where it needs to be, which is with patients. Right. And there's many groups, you know, in addition to SADS Foundation, that are really focused on patient advocacy. And I really do feel that Heart Rhythm supports that relationship quite well. Yep. SADS comes to the Heart Rhythm Society meeting basically every year and has a booth and they work very yep. closely together to support one another. Yeah, I think that that's great. And you know, it's there's no sense reinventing the wheel, right? For that's so, right. For so many different things when ultimately we're all, you know, focused on the same end game that's here. Right. So um, trying to unite forces and have this collaboration between these organizations, I think is really imperative moving yes. forward. So thank you for joining me today to You're bring welcome. that to the forefront. And, you know, we'll continue to work, all work together uh, towards good patient outcomes. That right? sounds great. Thank yeah. you, Julie. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. This is Julie Shea, Heart Rhythm TV. Thanks for joining us. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.